it's become uh, encouraged now to feminize men. And if they want to feminize their men, they can do it, but they're not going to feminize our men. Uh, we should, uh, you know, stay within reason. Doesn't mean we have to become, uh, you know, uh, barbarians, obviously not. We have to be sophisticated, yet, but manly. My children, I'll give you guys a quick anecdote. One of my sons on, on Valentine's Day, they showed him a movie, a romantic movie. And you know, my son's 10 years old, about one guy falling in love with another. So he comes home. My kids, they're op open book, especially when we're driving to the gym. I let them talk to me about anything. There's no topic that they can't bring up. So my son's like, ah, you know, watch this movie. And two guys were kissing each other. So me and my friend were laughing. And everybody got angry with us because we were laughing. And they were telling me it's normal. It's normal. It's normal. They were telling me the, the kids, the kids in the class were like, like, why are you laughing? It's not right. And the teacher was telling my son, oh, it's okay if you're gay. If you're gay, you know, like you could say, we're, me and my son, <laughs> my sons, my two sons, were like, that's, we're, we're like, that's pretty weird, man. That's pretty weird. These kids haven't even gone through puberty yet. I sent my kid to school <laughs> to learn math, science, history, philosophy, uh, you know, uh, ethics, uh, you know, the basics. Why are you showing them on Valentine's Day a, a story about a man falling in love with a man? Now, listen, there are gay people in the world. I tell my kids, look, there are gay people. You're going to see it. But I said, we're not gay. I was like, I tell them straight up. And I'm not ashamed. I tell if you're a teacher, tell your teacher that I told him you're heterosexual. And if he has a problem with that, to call me. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously. I'm 100% serious. I told him, I said, if he does not happy with the fact that you're, tell, tell, your, tell your teacher, look him in the eye and tell him, look, I'm 100% heterosexual. I said, use the term super straight. I told him what the term super straight is. And don't be shy about it at all. Don't be apologetic ab about it at all. Tell him we're straight. And I tell my son, you know why you're straight? Think about what if your father was gay? Where would you be? You wouldn't exist. Tell your teacher that there's something special when a man and a woman fall in love together. You know what that special Allah thing Allah. is? They create life. They create life. So there's something unique about when a man and woman get together, they can create life. They propagate life. We think life is beautiful. I think the progeny is the most important. They, they, you have to say, the Western world has become, I'm the most important thing in the world. So whatever makes me happy. If I'm gay, oh, well, that makes me happy. That's what I'm going to do. The Muslim world is saying, no. The collective is the most important. The Muslim body is the most important. What's the healthiest for us is to pro propagate our, our, our progeny and teach them Islam. And that is more important than me, the individual. And therefore, I'm going to raise, because don't forget, you can culturize. We're going to talk about, yes, some people might be born gay. Yes, that's true. But most, a lot of it could be culturalized. And anybody want to debate me on this, please, please do. I can't wait to have this debate. Uh, the Spartans, it was mandatory to be gay. The Spartans, you know, people, ah, I'm a Spartan. You sure you want to be a Spartan? Are you sure you want to be a Spartan? <laughs> it was mandatory to be homosexual as a Spartan. You can raise a child to be homosexual like you could raise a child to be heterosexual. Now, I'm not saying that it never happens that you try to raise a child heterosexual and he turns out to be homosexual. I'm not saying that. I'm saying by and large, by and large, mm -hmm. and listen to what I'm saying. Please don't misquote me here. You can influence a child at a young age mm -hmm. to what sexual orientation he will have. I tell my sons, I'm doing you guys the biggest favor I think I can do, and I'm teaching you to be heterosexual. You know why? So you can do the greatest thing a human being can do in this dunya is raise a family. Now you tell me what's the greater good being in a relationship with somebody of the same sex or being in a relationship with the opposite sex. And we can create a family. Nothing is more important to me than my family, not my sexual, my personal sexual life. My family is number one on every scope, except my religion. There's my religion, then there's my family. Everything else takes uh, place number three. Now, when you're propagating a homosexual culture, you're teaching your children to be gay, you're saying, look, you, the individual, is more important than the collective. Okay, that's your way of life. I tell my sons, don't argue with them. That's their way of life. That's fine. Our way of life is us, the collective, is more important than the individual. If you want to jump ship, you think you're more important than the collective, jump ship. But you're going to miss out on the greatest human experience that in this dunya you can have is a loving family.
There's nobody that ever raised a successful loving family that said, you know what? I would trade this loving family for this thing in the dunya or this. No, there's no human being who ever had a successful loving family. He, 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 he sidestepped all the pitfalls, all the dangers that can hurt a family. I don't know if you guys noticed, but everything in Islam that's haram is harmful to a family. And everything that is halal helps the family grow. I don't know if you guys noticed, but in the Quran, everything that is forbidden harms the family. Mm. Mm. How many millions of, no, how many billions of children have been saved from fetal alcohol syndrome? You know that women, they drink alcohol when they're pregnant and oftentimes it's unknowingly. They're pregnant, first trimester, they're drinking alcohol. And they're, you, are you guys aware of fetal alcohol syndrome? <laughs> how many, you know that when they do studies on fetal alcohol syndrome, they exclude Muslim countries. Muslim countries have no fetal alcohol syndrome. There are no children in Islam, in Muslim countries, that are harmed by alcohol. Yet in the West, in other cultures, there is a, it's a major problem. I don't know if you guys are aware of this. How many billions of people did the Quran save from fetal alcohol syndrome? Everything that is haram in the Quran is bad for the family. Now, I tell my children, the family is first and then it's the individual. This is our way of life. This is what I'm teaching you. And I tell them that this is going to bring you to a higher level of happiness and a closer relationship with understanding your God. Then if you put yourself first and the family second, then if you do that, in my opinion, you're going to build your own personal hell in this life and in the next. A person who's in out for himself it won't be long, but we figure out that person is a selfish member of this group. And he puts his interests before the collective. And we're going to push him out of the collective slowly. And it's going to be a type of uh, uh, difficult experience. Because every human being has a deep, connect, a deep desire for belonging to a group. You know, Adam salam, was in the Garden of Eden, yet he felt lonely. He felt a weakness. He needed companionship. We are all built to connect with one another. So the ultimate connection is the human family. So I asked my sons, where would you be if I was gay? You wouldn't exist, right? Checkmate, I tell them. So <laughs> the favor I did for you, the troubles I had raising a family, the sacrifices I made for this family to be successful, I expect you to pass it on and do the same. And you're going to get an intrinsic reward for it. You're going to have a successful family, inshallah. And if your peers want to be gay... That's their culture, their business, their religion, their philosophies. And there's more women for us. If they're gay, there's more women for us. <laughs> Don't argue with them. Don't fight with them. Don't, that's their prerogative. But that's it. That's how I see it. That's how I tackle the, the issue. Mm -hmm.